Hello and good morning. You are here back with me with the Staple Crew. Those of you who do not know who I am or uh, haven't watched this channel very often, I'm just a guy who sits under a tree on a rock, my meditation rock here, and I talk about global economics and uh, the world in which we live in based primarily upon crypto, but often banking and uh, the global macro system in which we all are part of. I like to drop some spiritual blessings in there occasionally here and there. Welcome to the channel. I have a kind of a dry one here for you today. Hopefully you guys get something from this because this is really big and I think the future of mankind is going to wrap around what I'm about to say in this video in so many ways that maybe some of us haven't thought of. The more I think about it, the more I think it's real and more real maybe than ever uh, before. Today I want to talk about Tether in particular, but stable coins uh, in general, if you will, but both of them, um, yes, DC, I mean, whatever, whichever one that you believe is uh, going to work for you and that you have the most confidence and faith and gut feeling about and you've done your homework with. I really believe that, uh, let's start the story. About two years ago now, I want to say, maybe I could have been three, time does fly, right? Tether came out and, and the powers that be decided that they were going to go ahead and come after Tether and we want to see your books and, and doggone it, we need to count every penny and we need to figure out what it's backed by and this whole thing's a scam and the only reason why Bitcoin went through the roof is because Tether propped the whole thing up. I don't know if you guys noticed, I followed that case for a long time because it went on forever and they never really did audit them. I have some Serious speculation about that. While we're talking about audits, isn't it odd that the banking institution that runs global banking, essentially, around the world, who is in charge of creating or distributing wealth around the world, has never been audited since 1913. And yet these people are calling out Tether for, hey, we need to see your books. Under what authority? <laughs> Under what, who do, who, who do they think they are when we've never been able to see who you are? Like, we don't even know if you got clothes on behind that curtain. You know what I'm saying there? Anyway, so Tether starts through the whole process. We've got this, we've got this other thing. And I had a little birdie tell me way back when, way back when, and they planted the seed in my head and I think it's so key. If I were Tether, what I would do is I would buy UST bills, treasuries. Why? That's what this show's about. Because that's what they did. What they started to do was say, okay, what do you want us to back it with? What would you like us to back this with? They were backing it with Bitcoin at the time. I believe they still own a ton of Bitcoin. They own a ton of the top 10 coins. You know the ones I like. We all like them together. What happened when they started this audit? This audit stopped in the middle of the entire thing and then they all went, oh yeah, no, okay, you're good now. They bought billions. They've continued to buy billions of dollars in treasuries. What does that do? That solidifies the treasuries. That solidifies the US government. It allows them to sell their product. As you and I know, many nations have decided not to buy their little pieces of paper that are virtually worthless, that are backing up a separate country because they are trying to back their own country's currencies in their own assets and collateralized instruments that they need to keep to keep their dollars or their pesos or whatever in their economy in which they use strong so that the people don't get crushed by the inflationary uh, printing of said one currency. So what did the Fed come out and do? Fed came out and looked at it and went, that's a great idea. You should just buy treasuries. If you buy treasuries, we'll stay off your back. What's happened? All of a sudden, you don't hear the bad negative press in which we once did about Tether, do we? We don't. 
But this is a double-edged sword. This is the sword that I keep talking about with you guys over these last few videos. And I hope you'll go back and watch that video, the last two I did. It's up here somewhere, I believe, that talks about what I'm talking about with these three situation. We're talking about bonds, we're talking about ETFs, and how it relates to the big picture going forward. See, I'm one of those people that likes to look forward. What's happening today? What's happening next year? I'm not here to regurgitate the news. Today's morning news about crypto or whatever it is, that's for you to read on your own, and there's thousands of channels that will go over it and tell you what happened today. My idea is to read those, listen to those, and give you a perspective, one person's perspective of 50 years of macro research that I can convey to you what I think is going to occur. Now, let's get back to what that means on a global scale. I'm, again, my head is itching here. What's happening here? <laughs> I, um, couldn't be the bugs flying around or anything, right? Um, so, when you look at what this means to other countries on the planet and the strength that the Fed is trying to create, why is the Fed creating these higher and higher interest rates? Why did they get off ZERP or zero interest? They got off of it because people got used to free, cheap, easy money, and they were like, well, I don't need to hold U.S. dollars. I'm not getting anything for in the bank or in, in interest in my own account, and yet inflation's going through the roof. That's a minus factor financially to everybody in that position. So what did they decide to do? They raised it. So now all of a sudden, if you're hanging on to a treasury, I was just at the conference over the weekend, and I talked to numerous people that said, hey, I'm getting 5.5% of my money. I'm pretty happy with that right? That's not so bad. Just think about if your country is in a massive mess, as far as Argentina currently, uh, you know, many of them come to mind, Jordan recently, many different countries have had their own issues with inflation battles. Here's the beauty of what I'm talking about. The Fed all of a sudden is a fan of Tether. Why? Because Tether's buying their treasuries? Yeah. What else is happening? On every single phone on the face of the planet, people can now hold U.S. dollars. Replications of U.S. dollars, if you will, in the form of Tether. How are you going to stop a citizen of any country in the world to hold a U.S. dollar? When you go to Argentina, everybody transfers their money directly into U.S. dollars because it holds its value way better than a currency that is falling into inflation at 90% inflation and sometimes higher than that, depending on the month you're there. You'd rather have your money in dollars. You can now, on your phone, hold anywhere in the world U.S. dollars digitally on your phone. They can't stop you from holding said digits. You see how this is a win-win for the Fed? You see how this is going to be, make it very difficult for the BRICS nations to say, hey, well, wait a minute, just no, go with our coin or our, our dollar, our currency, because it's backed by gold. You see how convenience and the phone and the digital world in which we live in can create ease of use, ease of hiding from inflation, and most importantly, how is a local government to ever say, no, you can't use that on your phone? How are they going to ban this? How are they gonna keep you from purchasing Tether or trading Tether on your phone? peer-to-peer, person-to-person, globally. The bankers are the ones left out to dry. So you've got the central banking system, and then you've got the lower layer of banks, and these guys are standing around panicking in a panic mode about, wait a minute, all they need to do is put their money in Tether. They're not 
saying that Tether is a great company. I'm not saying that. That's not what this video is about. What I'm trying to say is stable coins in one form or another is going to be the new middle bank, the new middleman. Wait, watch and see. One day they'll issue loans. One day they will <laughs> issue mortgages. That's where it's all headed. Again, one man's opinion, okay? Just from it makes sense, makes sense to me. I can't figure out why that would fail. Although, if the Fed didn't want it to occur, it wouldn't be happening, correct? But yet, they're not getting any hassle over it. Oh, sure, Congress went through their little, you know, dog and pony show, which is essentially all Congress is, my opinion. I'm not a political channel. Don't really care for those people. I'd like to find one who is honest. Just that's all I'm trying to say about that. But they all went through that pony show of, oh, we're going to control stable coins and we're coming after stable coins. Those are the politicians that were paid by the middle banking level that see their toilet, their bathtub draining. They're, dra they're standing there without a marketplace. They're now in a position of what are we going to do? How are we going to make a buck? How are we going to get everybody to, to put their paychecks into my bank so I can profit from the people? This is becoming more and more difficult. This is becoming an issue for all middle-level banks. So that's why your bigger banks, your JP Morgans, and even your corporations like BlackRock are seeing the writing on the wall. And what do they want to get into? I talked about it in the last video. ETFs. They want to get into these bonds backed by this new beautiful shiny bubble in which they have, which is crypto. Crypto and all of its misfortunes or givings is the answer for them when it comes to new products because they've run out of great ideas in Wall Street. They don't have any good ideas. They never really did. They don't, let's go over who they are. They don't produce anything. They don't manufacture anything. They don't create things. They simply package things together and sell it to you at a commission. And then they have the law and the banking system that tell the other people like me that you don't, you're not smart enough or you're not able to sell to the people because you're, you haven't passed our little written test. Therefore, you can't give financial advice. We have the monopoly on profiting off the people in which are the public. That's who they are. That's what Wall Street's always been. I used to be involved in that whole mess and one, I, my lifelong dream was to be involved in that whole thing. Didn't occur to the level that uh, I pat myself on the back and thankfully I became a different human being in a much different way and a better, better human being because of it in my opinion. They are done for. Wall Street is on the way out. It's all bots now, it's all been with decentralization and the rest of it and everything I just said about Tether and all these other stable coins with all what's coming, okay? Decentralization is, is crippling their control. The control is now going to be given to the people around the world, okay? And the countries are hanging on and doing their best to control within their borders and their own private markets, public markets. That's the world we're headed to. Again, one man's opinion, sometimes I'm right. Sometimes I get them right. I want to talk about a bunch of different stuff about Tether, but I hope you got something from that and you get the big picture that I'm trying to explain to you. Yes, Tether is a great place to store your money for a, a minimum amount of time in between trades or if you're about to buy a bunch of something and you want to put it into Tether. But let's think about this. You and I, depending on where you're watching this from, in particular in the Western world, you have been spoiled through money. You don't understand you need something like Tether, okay, to fight inflation. You're not living in that world. The functionality of crypto for the little man is its beauty. 
not the fact that they bought it for $50 and it went to $100 and they profited. That's good too. But you and I want that. What they look for is function. Is this keeping me from owning an ice cube that is melting in my hand, which is the monetary wealth in which they've worked so hard for? That's the the inflation that is destroying their money after they've worked so hard for it. Boy, I hope you get that because the last people to fully adopt crypto and to fully understand everything my videos are about is going to be the Western world, is going to be the financially well off. Those people are going to be the last one to understand its fundamental basic use and need for the people need it. Okay. We need this because if you stop and think about it in the future, we won't need inflation and markets. We could have a deflationary world. That's a whole nother video and I'll get into that one next. I hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you get something from it. Please let that light bulb shine and stay with us. Oh, and if you need to get a hold of us, uh, we have a new way to uh, look at to some of our other further comment uh, content, and that is at thestaplecrew.info. So check us out over there, and I will be with you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah. Let's see. I covered about half. Not even half of what I was trying to cover there. I did it again. I just got, I, but, just gotta let you guys in on a secret here. That's the second time I shot that video. Because see, the first time, I didn't do a sound check. Yeah, that's right. I shot the perfect video again. Perfect. I mean, per, you know, if I'm saying so myself, perfect video of course I, it's me so it can't be perfect no it wasn't perfect no it probably wasn't even good now that I think about it I, yeah it was probably horrible yeah I don't really make too many good videos so yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with it probably wasn't good so yeah maybe it's a good thing we didn't Anyway, now I am truly babbling on, and I love you all. Good day.